Uh, hello, and welcome to the first video in my series on learning Objective-C. In making these videos, I'm going to assume a few things, that you have some programming experience. I'm not really going to cover syntax uh, or things like loops and if statements and whatnot. I'm mainly going to cover the Objective-C language, uh, that you own an Intel-based Macintosh, and that ultimately you want to learn how to program for the iPhone, or at least don't mind learning how to program for the iPhone. I've gone ahead and placed a link to my website at the bottom of this video. Uh, if you're interested in following along, I strongly recommend you go there. Uh, you'll find downloads, written tutorials, and all kinds of other stuff. So anyways, let's begin. Uh, part 1, Introduction to Objects. Now the key feature of Objective-C, as opposed to C, is that it's an object-oriented language. Now what that means is, is that well, let's say you have something like a car. Uh, every car is going to have certain properties, might be blue, can have two wheels, it's located at your house, and it can perform certain th actions like driving forward, driving backward, it can turn. This combination of properties and actions is what to you defines a car. An object-oriented language thinks about things similarly to the way that you would think about a car. It defines a class of objects, cars, and expects these objects to have certain properties as well as be able to ha do, do certain things and have certain things done to them. Uh, in other words, while a language like C might understand the concept of driving forward, uh, it has no idea what a car is and no idea that only cars can drive forward, so theoretically you could try to make a house drive forward. It doesn't work. By contrast, in an object-oriented language, the language knows all about what cars are and what they can do, and so it allows you to assume certain things in your code. So how does it work? Uh, using Objective-C, you define a class of objects by specifying the properties of an object, also referred to as fields or instance variables, and the ab actions that an object can take, also referred to as methods. So let's consider our car. Assuming that our car, all cars have color, a certain number of wheels and drive forwards and backwards, we could create a class definition that says as such. And in fact, if you go to the website that's at the bottom of your screen, you can see a sample class declaration that would implement this. So that's nice, but why should we use objects? When I first encountered object-oriented programming, I had no idea what the hell the point of it was. And it wasn't until I started digging into it that I really started to figure out what was happening. Um, at a very basic level, what objects are used for our organization and reusability. By defining classes, I can group fields and methods together, keep related functions together, and generally code faster because I don't have to keep track of nearly as many things. Additionally, if I need multiple programs to understand about an object, I can create the object code once and reuse it over and over. Thinking ahead to iPhone development, we could, for example, imagine that there's a class called button that has methods called tap, hold, etc. By defining a class called button, we can keep all of our code in the same place, and no matter how many applications we want to develop, we can reuse that same code over and over again. And we don't necessarily, if we need to come back and say fix a bug in our button, we wouldn't have to go through every single one of our applications and change the code that lies underneath it. So in summary, uh, object-oriented language like Objective-C are designed so that we can show computers how to think about objects in much the same way that we do. Uh, we implement objects by defining classes and then specifying that these what these uh, specifying these properties about the object and the actions the object can take. By using objects, we can make it easier to implement and reuse blocks of code as well as to help keep things organized as we program. Uh, in the next lesson, we're actually going to take a look at Xcode and go through creating an object, creating your very first object as well as your very first program in Objective C. So, have fun. Good luck.